Is Amgen a potential opportunity? We're going to perform an AMGN stock analysis like Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time. We'll reverse engineer his decision making process to look at the most telling numbers before we estimate not one but two fair values for Amgen. Then you're going to want to watch till the end when we give our rating. Along the way, there's going to be a key bonus metric that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Amgen for your stock portfolio. So is Amgen undervalued or overvalued? Right now, Amgen trades for $263.22 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up just 1.5%. The S&P 500 is up around 8%, so Amgen underperforms the market. Keep in mind, Amgen pays an above average 3.18% dividend yield. Their average yield is added to any returns in their stock. In the last five years, Amgen has compounded at 7% annually. In the last decade, they've compounded at 9%. When we go back all the way before the global financial crisis, in the last two decades, Amgen has compounded at 8.5% annually. This beats the market over this time, and Amgen's dividends are added to these returns. Right now, Amgen trades $30 below its 52-week high. The company's up $50 from their 52-week lows. Just over 1% of their shares are sold short. How big is Amgen? They're huge. They have a $140 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Amgen stock? Amgen just acquired Horizon Therapeutics for $28 billion. Amgen is a leader in biotechnology-based human therapeutics with historical expertise in renal disease and cancer-supportive care products. Flagship drugs include red blood cell boosters Epigen and RNSP, immune system boosters Neuropigen and Neuralast, and Enbrel and Otesla for inflammatory diseases. Amgen introduced its first cancer therapeutic in 2006 and markets bone-strengthening drug Prolia, which was approved in 2010, and Avenity, which was approved in 2019. The acquisition of Onyx boosted the firm's therapeutic oncology portfolio with recent launches including Rapatha, Amovig, Lumacraz, and Tezspire. Amgen's biosimilar portfolio includes biosimilar Avastatin, Heraceptin, and Humira. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into their numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. A normal business earns 7% returns on capital. When we look for a benchmark that's double this, we can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the company. Amgen earns very steady, very stable returns on capital, coming in just above 20% in each of the last five years. When these are averaged out, Amgen earns 23% returns on capital in a given year. That's three times better than a normal business. This is a huge check on metric number one. Metric number two, we want growth to support their high returns on capital. We want sales, earnings, and free cash flow growth in the last five years. This is all or nothing. In this time, Amgen has grown their revenues by 12%. However, the company's earnings and their free cash flows are both down. Their earnings declined by 5% and their free cash flows are down by 8% when we include today's numbers. These both are slightly down on more interest expense for the business and a $500 million loss on an asset sale. While those aren't huge declines, it's more telling that Amgen's growth has really slowed. Because of that, their margins are slightly down. This is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we want earnings per share growth. This looks at Amgen from the view of a shareholder. We just learned their earnings are down by 5%, but their earnings per share are actually up. Why? This may surprise you, but the company's bought back 14% of their shares outstanding. These big share buybacks outpace the decline in their earnings. In their last 12 months, even though it's not shown on this chart, Amgen has earned $14.85 per share. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want free cash flow growth. We see the same thing as our previous metric, even though their free cash flows have declined by 8%. Their 14% share buybacks more than make up for this. Their free cash flows have grown in the last five years up until today. It's another check on metric number four. So far through four metrics, Amgen has three checks and one X. What will the rest of our analysis hold in store for the business? Before we look at their balance sheet and estimate our fair values, why don't we check in on our bonus? Right now, Amgen pays an above average 3.18% dividend yield, but is it safe and can it grow in the future? That's what we want to try to figure out through our bonus. We want Amgen's free cash flows to support their dividends. Even though their free cash flows are down over this time, Amgen's dividend payments are up. They've grown their dividend by quite a bit. Still, Amgen supports these in all five years using their cash flows. They also support their dividends today. At the same time, Amgen has a pretty small dividend payout ratio. 
Between their share buybacks and the increase in their dividends, Amgen is returning a lot of capital to shareholders, even as the company's growth has stalled. Amgen supports their dividends, which is what we want here. It's a check on our bonus. In recessions, it's businesses with too much debt that can have the biggest losses or even go broke. Metric number five, we want their net debt to be supported by their free cash flows. Amgen added on debt in the last five years. They increased this from $4.5 billion in 2018 to more than $30 billion in 2022. Right now, this sits at $27 billion. Still, Amgen's increased this by a lot. They also had their $28 billion acquisition of Horizon Therapeutics. Amgen, like other biotech companies, is no stranger to acquisitions. They bought a lot of companies over the years to add to their pipeline. Still, even though Amgen has $27 billion in net debt today, when we add up their free cash flows from their last five years, the company has produced $46 billion worth. That easily supports their debt position, even with these big acquisitions. It's a check on metric number five. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Amgen's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two ways we'll estimate Amgen's fair values using their free cash flows. Right now, Amgen has a $167 billion enterprise value. It adds their net debt position and their market cap to look at Amgen like a private company. In the last five years, we learned Amgen produced $46 billion of free cash flow. This means they produce $9.2 billion worth in an average year. When we divide that by their enterprise value, it gives us a 5.5% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's above the yield from the 10-year treasury. Currently, Amgen produced $9.7 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When we divide that by their enterprise value, it gives us a 5.8% current yield. Both of these are above the 10-year treasury. They're above the risk premium we want as well. This means on metric number six, it's a check for Amgen. Don't just run out and go buy the business. You'll want to watch as we estimate their fair value per share before you stay for our rating. Everything we've covered so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Amgen. This takes us to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any field, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We'll take Amgen's free cash flows today and grow these into the future using assumptions. These are based on how Amgen has performed in the last decade. Amgen in this time has been a very predictable business. That's not a guarantee for the future, but it can better inform these assumptions. If the company grows their free cash flows at 9% a year in the next 10 years, then in the following decade, if this growth rate slows to 4% annually, we won't add in their tangible book value as that's skewed based on how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. Drug manufacturers can be very asset light Amgen's not much of an exception there. If we want a market beating 15% rate of return like Warren Buffett, at today's valuations, an estimate of Amgen's fair value per share is around $197. That's down $67 from today's stock price. Keep in mind, it's only around $15 below their 52-week lows. Be aware of some key points. This discount rate is an estimate of their total returns to shareholders based on these free cash flows. It would already include their dividend yield. Their stock price wouldn't be up by this full 15%. In the last 10 years, Amgen has traded for a price to owner earnings of around 14 times. Right now, they're trading for 13 times this multiple. They're just a bit below where they've been at in the past decade. Keep in mind, this isn't accounting for their Horizon acquisition. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before you make any investment decision. Warren Buffett cares about the numbers, but the qualities of a business are even more important to him. Why don't we learn what these are for Amgen? We're going to start with a long thesis. Number one, Amgen's pipeline has been stale since the launch of Prolia, but cholesterol drug Repatha and migraine drug Amavig revived enthusiasm for the firm's research engine, since Lumacraz and Tespire also look differentiated. Number two, the acquisition of Decode gave Amgen the ability to identify potential new drug targets validated by human genetics, and the firm continues to build on this database. Number three, Amgen's improved manufacturing efficiency may not only benefit gross margins, but it could also give the firm a cost advantage in the biosimilar market. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows for Amgen. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, biosimilars have been on the market in Europe since 2007 but have had a larger impact on Amgen since 2019 as U.S. exposure intensifies. Number two, Amgen's position in blood cancer is uncertain, 
as Kai Prolix sales haven't lived up to expectations from the $10 billion Onyx acquisition and Johnson & Johnson's and Genolab's Darzalex and BCMA-targeted therapies are likely to be strong competition. Number 3. Amgen lacks the focus of some of its biotech peers, with drugs targeting large markets like osteoporosis and cardiology, and specialty markets like immunology and oncology. Now let's combine these qualities with their numbers as we give a rating. So far, we've learned in our analysis of Amgen, stock ticker AMGN, their profit growth may have stalled, but the company made a big acquisition for Horizon Therapeutics to try to jumpstart that growth again. Even still, their financials have a lot of good signs. They earn very high returns on capital. They've returned a lot of capital to shareholders, both through big share buybacks and a growing dividend. The company also supports their debt position. Right now, based on their free cash flow yields, these look potentially attractive compared to the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, from today's valuations, if you believe these assumptions, and you want a market beating 15% rate of return like Warren Buffett, an estimate of Amgen's fair value per share is around $197. Stay patient as Amgen last traded at those levels in September of 2019. When we combine all their factors, Amgen looks like a pretty interesting business for more research. If you enjoyed today's AMGN stock analysis, like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and watch this next video.